dear friends i am professor d j trivedi i am taking your digital electronics and tybs electronics paper el 5502 <coughs> unit number 1 that is your digital electronics syllabus of this digital electronics is the two chapter the first chapter is counters and second chapter is sequential digital logic circuits the counters in a counters there are certain counters you are supposed to study there are two type of the counters asynchronous counters and in asynchronous counter there is a ripple counter up counting down counting and up down counting there is a 3 bit 4 bit ripple counter which you are going to study then there is a decoding gates will be there which can be either nand gate nor gate etc which decodes a particular state out of number of disk state then there are certain synchronous counter you have to study in a synchronous counter there are two type of the synchronous counter you are going to study that is look ahead logic and steering logic then there is a changing counter modulus that means from natural count you can modify it count by skipping the number of states and that way the desired modulus of the counter can be prepared from that we can prepare a decade counter there are two type of decade counter 2 multiplied by 5 and 5 multiplied by 2 two different com- configurations of decade counter you are going to study then presetable counter the presetable counter means you can start the count from any count and you can stop at any count that means you can preset the counter and last not but the last important topic is counter design as synthesis problem so these are the seven topics you are going to study in chapter number 10.1 to 10.7 in your malvino and leach which is well known book to you second chapter is design of synchronous and asynchronous sequential logic circuits out of this part a is in your syllabus part a is design of synchronous sequential logic circuits in a part a there are four topics are there which you are going to study 11.1 to 11.4 11.1 is the model selection 11.2 is the state transition diagram 11.3 is state synthesis table and 11.4 is design equation and circuit diagram again it is this chapter is taken from the same book that is digital principles and application by malvino and leach objective of your study is like this the first objective is to describe the basic construction and operation of asynchronous counter a second objective determine the logic circuit needed to decode a given state from the output of given counter third objective describe the synchronous counter and its advantage the fourth objective see how the modulus of the counter can be reduced by skipping on or more of its natural count and the last objective understand how to design counter as finite state machine counters what is a counter counter is probably one of the most useful and versatile sub system in a digital system so it is always there in any digital system because that is synchronizing everything in a digital system so counter are required counter is driven by clock pulses so clock pulse is heartbeat of a counter and this two things are very important in digital system a counter driven by clock can be used to count a number of clock pulses so what is the use of the counter it counts the number of clock pulses and clock pulses are occurring 
at regular interval of time that means it is having a timing cycle so from counting the number of clock pulses you can count the time or a period or a frequency since the clock pulses occur at a known interval the counter can be used as an instrument for measuring time and therefore period or frequency there are basically two different types of the counter synchronous counter and asynchronous counter the ripple counter is simple and straightforward in operation and its construction usually require a minimum of hardware it does however have a speed limitation this comes in an asynchronous counter so in asynchronous counter normally we utilize the jk flip flop in jk flip flop in the last condition that is a toggle mode condition j is equal to 1 k is equal to 1 applying a negative edge of the clock pulse the flip flop is going to be toggled that means output is going to be complemented that is called toggling condition this type of the flip flops we are going to utilize to construct a counters and in asynchronous counter these flip flops are connected in a cascade way that means output of one flip flop is connected as a clock input of the next flip flop <coughs> the because of this this is having hardware count <coughs> is simple that means you require a minimum of hardware count but there is a limitation of its speed speed is going to be limited because large amount of time it takes to settle the state of a given count each flip flop is triggered by a previous flip flop and thus the counter has a community settling time <coughs> counters such as this are called a serial or a synchronous counter this counter because they are connected in series that is also known as a serial counter an increase in speed of operation can be achieved by use of a parallel or synchronous counter so if we want to remove that limitation of asynchronous counter that means we want to increase the speed or we want to reduce the settling time then we have to go for a synchronous counter here all the flip flops are triggered by the same clock pulse or in synchronism and thus settling time is simply equal to delay propagation delay time of single flip flop only so settling time is going to be reduced at the cost of increased hardware the increase in speed is usually obtained at the price of increased hardware serial and parallel counters are used in combination to compromise between the speed of operation and hardware count so between these two things <clears throat> that is speed of operation and hardware count we can compromise with this combinational counter that is a combination of synchronous and asynchronous counter partly the counter can be operated in two different modes either it is going to be count up mode or it is going to be count down mode whichever counter may be either it is going to be the serial counter or a parallel counter or a combinational counter can be designed such that each clock transition advances the contain of the counter by one then it is operating an account up mode the opposite is also possible that means by applying each clock pulse counter can be decremented by each clock pulse and hence it is called a count down mode many counters can be either clear so that every flip flop contain a zero or preset such that contain of the flip flop represents any desired binary numbers <clears throat> so all the flip flops output is going to be zero that is going to be clear or all the flip flops output are going to be one that is going to be preset or it can be start from any particular state so that way it can be preset so there are two different asynchronous control is also going to be added preset and clear with jk flip flops now we are starting the first counter 
and that is a asynchronous counter in asynchronous counter first counter we are going to study is a 3 bit ripple counter a binary ripple counter can be constructed using clock jk flip flops figure shows three negative edge figures jk flip flop connected in cascade mode the system clock a square wave driven clock flip flop a the output of a drives the clock input of the flip flop b and output of b drives the flip flop c all the j and k inputs are tied to the vcc this means that each flip flop will change the state or it is going to be toggled or output is going to be complemented with a negative transition at this clock input you can see the clock one uh, schematic circuit diagram of ripple counter in a the waveforms are given in figure b and truth table is given in figure c 10.1 you can see that here all j and k are connected to the vcc that means j and k of all the flip flops are connected to one one condition hence it is working in toggle mode conditions system clock is applied to the flip flop a then output of a is connected to the flip flop b and output of b is connected and a to the flip flop c and that way it is working in a serial mode or if chronos counter you can see that arrow is given on a time line for the waveforms at instant of time a at the instant of time b at the instant of time c the output of the clock pulse is changing from high to low so it is considered to be negative edge trigger at that time flip flop is going to be responding hence it is the flip flop is said to be negative edge trigger flip flops when the output of flip flop is used as a clock input for the next flip flop we call the counter the ripple counter or asynchronous counter the a flip flop must change the state before it can be triggered b flip flop and the b flip flop has to change the state before it can trigger the c flip flop the triggers move through the flip flops like ripple in the water hence it is called a ripple counter because of this the overall propagation delay time is sum of the individual delay time for instance if each flip flop in the three flip flop counter has a propagation delay time of 10 nanosecond the overall propagation delay time of the counter is going to be 30 nanosecond because after the negative edge hit the first flip flop a output is going to be set after 10 nanosecond that output is going to be triggered the flip flop b and again after 10 nanosecond the output of b will be toggled and output of b will be triggered the flip flop c and again after 10 nanosecond the flip flop c is going to be toggled so overall 10 plus 10 plus 10 30 nanoseconds total time it will take to settle the contain and that's why it is called settling time the waveform given in figure 10.1 b shows the action of the counter as a clock run let's assume that flip flops are all initially reset to produce zero output if we consider a to be the least significant bit rsv and c the most significant bit msv we can say that the contain of the counter is cba is equal to 000 every time there is a clock negative transition flip flop a will change the state this is indicated by small arrow at different instead of time on a time line either a b c d that way it is going to be designated thus at point on a time line a goes high at point b it goes back low and at c is goes back high and so on so at every instead of time a b c the flip flop a is going to be toggled notice that waveform at the output of flip flop a is one half the clock frequency so you can say that periodic time is going to be double of 
waveform of A. That means the frequency becomes half. So that way, the flip flop can work as a divide by two counter also. Counter since A act a clock for B, each time the waveform at A goes slow, the flip flop B will be traveled. Thus, at point B on the timeline, B goes high. It then goes low at point D and toggles back high again at the point F. Notice that the waveform at the output of the flip flop B is one half the frequency of A and one fourth of the clock frequency. Similarly, since B acts as a clock for the C, each time the waveform at B goes low, the flip flop C will be toggled. Thus, C goes high at point D on the timeline and goes back low again at the point H. The frequency of the waveform at C is one half that of the B, but it's only one eight of the clock frequency. So we can see that here there are three flip flops, so it's going to be there, and the frequency is going to be divided by eight. Since the binary ripple counter counts in a straight binary sequence, from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. It is easy to see that counter having n flip flop will have two raised to n output conditions. So if where n indicates the number of flip flops. For instance, the three flip flop counter just discussed here, two raised to three is equal to eight output conditions are there. <coughs> Sorry. This output conditions are 0, 0, 0, through 111. Five flip flop would have 2 raised to 5 is equal to 32 output conditions. 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on. The largest binary number that can be represented by n cascaded flip flop has a decimal equivalent of 2 raised to n minus 1. For example, three flip flop counter reaches a maximum decimal number of 2 raised to 3 minus 1 that is equal to 7. The maximum decimal number for the 5 flip flop is 2 raised to 5 minus 1 that is equal to 31, while 6 flip flop have a maximum count of 63. A 3 flip flop counter is often referred to as modus of 8 or mode 8 counter since it has 8 discrete states. The number of states through which counter can progress is called modules of the counter. Similarly, a four flip flop counter is mode 16 counter and six flip flop counter is modules of 16, 64 counters. The modules of counter is total number of discrete states through which the counter can progress. Now, there is a, we are going to study the IC 7493A. This IC is a TTL IC and DIP pinout diagrams, logic diagram, and truth table of this I say is given in next figure. You can see this figure. This is a 14 pin IC. In a 14 pin IC, the pins are layout is dual in line package. This is one side, this is another side line. The dual in line package 14 pin IC is going to be there. This is a transistor, transistor logic, TTLIC. In this one, you can see the schematic circuit diagram here. There are four JK flip flops are going to be used. Out of this four JK flip flops, three flip flops are interconnected. That is flip flop B, C, and flip flop D. They are interconnected as three bit ripple counter. Just you have studied previously and it is given a clock input as a clock B on pin number 1. You can see that pin number 1 is a clock B. So if you are utilizing or you are giving a system clock at clock B and if you are considering the outputs are going to be QD, QC and QB. QB will be LSB and QD will be MSB, then it is a 3-bit counter. 
which is progressing from 000 to 111 condition and that way it is working as modulus of eight counter here in this circuit you can see that pin number 2 and pin number 3 pin number 2 and pin number 3 that is r01 and r02 are there they are controlling the ic that means they are connected to the nand gate and when the output of the nand gate is going to be low then there is a clear terminal which is also active low so all the capacitors of it is connected that means as soon as output of the nand gate is going to be low all the flip flops are going to be cleared that means contain of the flip flops are going to be 0000 qa is going to be zero qb is going to be zero qc is going to be zero and qd is going to be zero when this is going to be happen when r01 and r02 both are going to be one one conditions that means output of the nand gate is going to be zero and clear terminal is going to be activated so that is the what function of pin number 2 and 3 pin number 4 5 6 and 7 this pins 4 6 and 7 this pins and 13 are not connected in wave that means they are unused pins pin number 5 is connected with the vcc 5 volt power supply you have to provide over here because it is ctl so which is should, should be plus 5 volt regulated power supply should be given here pin number terminal is ground pin number 12 11 9 and 8 are qa qd qb and qc they are the outputs of this ic if you want to utilize this as a modulus of 16 counter how you are supposed to utilize it? you have to provide the system clock at the clock a and output of the qa should be connected to the clock input b and that way it will work for as a modulus of 16 counter then it will start counting from 0000 to 1111 conditions and total number of discrete states are going to be 2 raised to 4 that is going to be 16 so it is working as a modulus of 16 counter maximum decimal equivalent which can be stored is going to be 2 raised to 4 minus 1 that is going to be 151111 is going to be stored the waveform of this counter is also shown over here at point a we can see that this counter are going to be you can see that at point a all the flip flops are reset that means output of a b c and d they are going to be cleared then when the first negative edge will come then output of qa is going to be toggled and every negative edge of the clock pulse the output of a is going to be toggling output of a is connected as a clock input for the b and b is going to be toggled when output of a is changing from high to low similarly for the flip flop c also when the flip flop c is going to be toggled then output of b is changing from high to low or a negative transition occur and similarly for d and that's why if the output frequency of qd will be 116 of the clock frequency so it is dividing clock frequency by 16 now another variation of the ripple counter we are going to study and that is known as the down counter down counter every clock pulse the contain of the counter is decremented an interesting and useful variation of 3 bit ripple counter is shown here the system clock is still used at the clock input to the flip flop a but complement of a that is a bar is used to drive the flip flop b likewise b bar is used to drive the flip flop c take look at take a look at the resulting waveforms you can see this figure again all three jk flip flops j and k are connected with the vcc that means they are working in a toggle mode conditions clock is applied system clock is applied at the clock input of the first flip flop so the first flip flop a is going to be toggled 
at every negative position of clock pulses. That means at the start time A, B, C, D, etc. You can see in the waveforms, the top A is going to be toggling. At A it is going to be toggle. At B is also it is going to be toggle. At C also it is going to be toggle. At D it is going to be toggle. So every negative edge of the clock pulse, flip flop A is going to be toggle. Now, flip flop B. Output of A bar is connected to the clock input of B. That means when A makes a transition from high to low, A bar makes the transition from low to high. That means when A makes the transition from high to low, then A bar makes the transition from low to high. So in, in, from high to low, it is not going to be triggered. But opposite to that, when A makes the transition from low to high, A bar makes the transition from low high to low. And that is this negative A transition the flip flop B is going to be toggle. So now the flip flop B is going to be toggle at timeline. You can say that at instant of time A, at the instant of time B, at the instant of time C, E, and G, etc. The flip flop B is going to be toggle. Similarly, B bar is connected as a clock input for the flip flop C. So at the instant of time A, when B makes a transition from low to high, B bar makes the transition from high to low and that will trigger the flip flop C and output of the flip flop C is going to be changed from low to high. At A, again it will be changed from high to low or it is going to toggle at instant of time E. Again it is going to toggle at instant of time I and you can see that truth table. The contain of the counter is changing from 111 then on the next clock pulse it is changing from 110 and the next clock pulse, it is changing to 101. Next clock pulse, it is changing 100. And so on. That means the contain of the counter is decremented with every negative edge of the clock pulse. So it is working in countdown mode. Up-down counter. So we can prepare the counter, 3-bit ripple counter and 4-bit ripple counter and other higher modules of the counter which can operate either in up counting mode as well as in down counting mode. That can be possible using and or network added with each counter. A 3-bit asynchronous up down counter that con counts in a straight binary sequence is shown in the next figure. It is simply a combination of the two counters discussed previously. For this counter to progress through a count up sequence, it is necessary to trigger each flip-flop with the true side of the previous flip-flop. As opposed to the complement side, if the count down control line is low and count up control line is high, this will be the case and counter will have a count up waveform such as those shown in figure 1. On the other hand, if count down is high and count up is low, each flip-flop will be triggered from the complement side of the previous flip flop. The counter will then be in a countdown mode and will progress through the waveform as shown in figure 10.4. The process can be continued to other flip flops down the line to form an up down counter of larger modular. It should be noted, however, that the gates introduce additional delay that must be taken into account when determining the maximum rate at which the counter can progress. You can see that how it is working and that this up down counter here between each flip flops there is an end or network is connected. There are two end gates which is supposed to be two input end gates are going to be there. Count up line is going to be high that means upper end gates are going to be activated and when the count down line is going to be high the lower end gates are going to be activated and the signal will pass depending upon that. So when it is working in a count up mode, count up line should be high, the count down line should be low, so the signal will pass through upper end gates only, which will trigger the next flip flop 
and it is working in a count up as well as when the countdown line is going to be high, it will work in a countdown mode. Thank you very much. So here we have studied the asynchronous counter, activity, some question, etc. I will give you in some next slides. Thank you.